Hello learners, welcome to the series of learning virtualization and cloud computing. Today we are going to discuss about virtualization types. So as you know, we have already begin with understanding the virtualization technology. Today's session will describe about what are the various types of virtualization technology existing, like where we can implement the virtualization. So first thing is CPU virtualization. Then there comes memory, operating system, network, server, desktop, and application virtualization. Now the broader idea behind the virtualization technology under all these aspects is that we are about to create a virtual version of these resources. Okay, so this is what we are going to do while we will be learning all these different different types where the virtualization technology exists. For an example, if I have to describe you about the CPU virtualization, then I will simply say that there is a one CPU, okay, and it has been used by multiple virtual machines. I must say that as uh, we have already learned about the virtualization concept in the previous session, when the virtualization technology has been implemented, the hardware resources or the resources which are associated within the physical machine are getting shared among all the virtual instances. Now here, what will happen? This particular CPU will be shared among all of these three virtual machines, right? And each of this virtual machine will consider like this, this is the only machine which is sharing the CPU. So this is what the point is behind understanding the concept of CPU virtualization. Otherwise, uh, in the next session, I will be detailing you more about this CPU virtualization because from here only we will be uh, driving a new concept of where the different different technologies in context of virtualization exists like full virtualization, para virtualization and OS assisted virtualization. Now the next aspect is the memory virtualization. So the concept will again re remain the same, right? Because the, uh, the broader point is that there is a one memory, which is a, or you could say that the physical memory which is associated within a particular host machine, right? So this is a memory of a physical machine. Now, depending upon the virtual machines, which are located on this particular machine, they will be sharing some part of that particular physical memory. So the segmentation of a memory, one single physical memory, okay, so that each and every virtual machine can have or can take the assistance from this physical memory, we will call it as a memory virtualization. So here I am having a good example, you could say, of memory virtualization. Like this uh, picture is demonstrating the idea that within a physical machine or a host machine is lying this machine's memory. This is the entire memory which the machine is consisting of. Okay. Now what will happen? this memory is actually been divided among these virtual machines. So even if when you will be uh, installing the or creating the virtual machines in the uh, virtualization environments, whether it is VMware workstation or it is the virtual boxes, you will come to know that while uh, putting these specifications, they will ask you the question that how much memory from the physical machine your virtual machine would be required, right? So that particular memory you can allocate fixed or you can also allocate in a dynamic manner. So you have to pick that particular capability and accordingly that particular memory will be allocated to work uh, within this particular virtual machine. The application, the processes which are running under this virtual machine will be actually utilizing this memory. And for this particular virtual machine, this is the only memory that they are considering that they are having. Okay, but yes, it might be the case that in certain cases, the processes can also share this particular memory as well as the another memory, depending upon which kind of allocation has been taken place while selecting the option of memory in the virtual machine. Okay, 
the same is the case here so here that particular machine memory is been divided into the physical memory and that physical memory is further been used by the processes which are been installed or working under these virtual machines as a virtual memory got it so there is one more concept remaining that is the operating system level virtualization or os level virtualization so ideology is still the same this is the hardware or the physical machines equipment which is consisting of a shared operating system there is there is one operating system which has been shared among different different apps and all of these apps are working on different different servers but the idea is that they are sharing both the operating system as well as the hardware resources of a physical machine so this is what is the capability of such kind of virtualization so normally the google compute containers as well as the virtual private servers these are the examples which are using or utilizing this operating system level of virtualization facility moving ahead the next concept came uh, which is uh, been used at a wider range nowadays that is the network virtualization so in a layman language again i will say we are having one physical network that suppose this is a lan network okay now as per our convenience if we have the facility to logically segment this lan network into the small small networks okay and so that this one network the two network work in isolation with each other and sometimes even if they want to contact with each other they that thing can also take place through the routers or the switches okay such capability is known as the network virtualization means i am virtualizing a one single network so here is a one complete example been given here so example is been taken from the internet ethernet uh, adapter which is been basically used with intel's bt technology intel's bt technology is very much popular nowadays and currently in the market so this is what uh, they are saying in within this particular net a uh, network adapter different ports would be associated okay so depending upon the ports certain vms would be associated within those port so this particular port will be referring uh, to one kind of network this particular port might be referring to another kind of network means they are logically segmenting the network so this entire thing is happening through the virtual machine monitor means through the virtualization layer only or over the hypervisor only so this is how the concept of network virtualization takes place so here uh, i am going to compute or compile the entire thing like how the virtualization environment actually works so broadly there are these four entities or you could say that the essential things which are required in order to implement the virtualization facility one is the physical hardware that is must to have because this is the one which we will be virtualizing later so physical hardware may consist of the cpu the input output devices the ram as well as the disks again furthermore in order to implement the virtualization we need a virtualization layer so that layer can be uh taken uh, or that layer can be processed through the hypervisor in order after implementing the hypervisor then what we will be able to do is we will be able to virtualize our hardware now what are these hardware or from where these hardware resources are coming these are actually the virtualized one means the hardwares are only been associated with this these are the only hardwares which are been uh, you could say that the shared among different different virtual machines okay so then there comes up uh, the virtual machines concept at the fourth level as we have already learned in the previous session that what is a virtual machine it is a consisting of operating system and the applications which are running on them so here in this example in total four different virtual machines are running on this platform so moving ahead uh, as we have already covered various uh, types of virtualizations so here is the certain virtualization solutions which are been provided by various enterprises 
like uh, this VMware's ESX and ESXi hosts or servers, we have started our discussion on this. In the hands-on lab facility also, we will be working on these kind of servers. Then Citrix Zen servers are there, Hyper-V is there, Oracle's virtual box is there, virtual PC is there, KVM is there. There are so many virtualization products and solutions nowadays available in the market. Okay. So with this, I hope that you are able to get the basic idea of what are the various types of virtualizations and where we can implement the virtualization. And I have, as I have already told you that the desktop virtualization or server virtualization and all such things, they only require only one, uh, they are only looking for the virtual versions of, uh, uh, of the entity which you want to work with. Like if I am taking the example of desktop virtualization. So desktop virtualization means there is a one desktop, I am remotely accessing that desktop, okay? Similarly, if there is a server virtualization in there, server virtualization is that within a one server, I am able to work with different, different another servers as well. Okay. So these concepts, uh, I think are very general now. If you have understood the concept of virtualization, then it is very easy for you to understand that as well. So thank you so much for joining this session. I hope that you have understood uh, this session on virtualization types. Thank you.